everyone, it's Dave. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. And today we do have Teddy in the background behind me as well, so you can say hi to Teddy as well. Uh, today's going to be a little bit of a different style video, so I try to get one out every three days or so. I just find that that is what works best for the YouTube algorithm. But been super busy lately, haven't had a ton of time to do preparations or anything like that, write a script, get some footage together, do research. So I'm really just winging it here. <laughs> and, you know, maybe it'll be even better because it'll just be more genuine and and off the cuff. Uh, I guess we'll see how it goes. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about United Launch Alliance and the recent story. We've heard that they may be in a bit of trouble with the United States government and the Air Force, Space Force, all the rest. Also talk about what the potential implications of this are for other space companies, including, of course, Rocket Lab, SpaceX, uh, the whole national security launch picture, and Blue Origin, who are very much in the picture as well when it comes to ULA. So uh, before we dive into that, please do hit subscribe and like and all those good things if you like the content. Everyone who does that is very much appreciated. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dive into the latest around ULA. So, if you're familiar with ULA and their new Vulcan rocket, which has been in the works for what feels like forever to replace their aging former lineup, uh, ULA has been America's national security ride to space basically for what feels like my entire life. And their old rockets, for various reasons, no longer going to be supported. They need this Vulcan to come online, really carry the load, and be pretty much the sole product the entire company has. Now, we did just have a article released where a official with the U.S. government basically called out ULA saying he wasn't feeling very comfortable with their progress and wasn't convinced that they'd be able to launch all these payloads they have been contracted to launch in time on the Vulcan rocket. Needless to say, uh, bad look for ULA, bad news. The U.S. government is their primary customer, and they really need them to stay happy. So, also in the background for this, we have a few other stories that are kind of intersecting. Second of all, ULA is looking to sell itself right now, and the front runner appears to be, from all sources, Blue Origin. So, we'll have to keep that in mind as we talk about this story, that the whole ULA company could eventually be taken over by Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin, who are building their own brand new rocket, the new Glenn, and how much sense this really makes to have these two companies with two brand new rockets coming online at pretty much the exact same time, why would you want to do that and buy and combine them both, right? It just seems a little odd. Surely you'd rather just max out your production on one rocket and that might make a little more sense from a manufacturing and production point of view, at least if you ask me. Again, I'm no expert. Anyway, so the ULA situation, uh, first of all, they have launched Vulcan once successfully, so congratulations to them on that. They are contracted to launch a ton of uh, Amazon's Kuiper satellites, as well as a bunch of national security launches under the NSSL program. So if they are unable to get those launches off because they're not able to manufacture and have enough Vulcans ready in time, uh, who are the big winners of this story? Well, for me, the number one winner has to actually be SpaceX. Yeah, I know you're probably thinking I was going to say Rocket Lab here, but the truth is that the National Security Space Launch Program divided up into lanes one and two for the coming years. Vulcan is in the running for lane two, and Neutron is in running for lane one. And now that doesn't even uh, talk about the contracts that have already been won by Vulcan, which they're due to launch and they may lose. And the only person who's really capable of pulling off those launches right now is SpaceX with their Falcon 9 rocket. So big winner, SpaceX, um, and their monopoly continues to grow not only on the current batch of national security launch, but in the future, maybe if the government's not as confident in ULA, they'll win less launches with the Vulcan. Now, uh, winner number two, maybe Rocket Lab, because you do know that Vulcan 
will try to bid in lane one as well as lane two. They've made it clear that those lane two rockets are also welcome to bid in lane one. So there's a bit less competition for Rocket Lab in lane one. And I do think that Rocket Lab and their Neutron rocket should be the first new commercial player to get a launch contract out of this NSSL Lane 1, which will be an absolutely uh, historic event because <laughs> it's really been ULA and SpaceX for the entire history, basically. So yeah, I can't wait to see that. The other problem ULA is having right now is that they need to launch two certification missions in order to be certified as safe to launch these really sensitive, really important national security payloads. They've already launched one. We did see that launch previously. The second one is supposed to be Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, a very exciting vehicle that's supposed to go to the International Space Station, but it's really looking like Dream Chaser is not going to be ready in time. And when these things get pushed, it can be really hard because it's not just going to space. It has to dock with the space station. You have to deal with the scheduling on that with hatches uh, when they need more deliveries. And it, it just becomes a scheduling mess as well if the Dream Chaser isn't ready in time. So uh, what is ULA to do? Well, it seems like their best course of action is also a bit of a painful one. They're gonna probably have to just launch an empty Vulcan. Now, not completely empty. They will have a mass simulator, which is, you know, weighs about the same as a payload, so it does a good job of testing out the rocket, but it pays you nothing. And to launch a rocket worth many tens of millions of dollars, potentially over $100 million, and get nothing in return, uh, that's also rough for the company, especially when they're trying to look as good as possible in order to get acquired and get the best deal for their owners, which is, by the way, Lockheed Martin and Boeing. Bad spot to be in, but I think they really just have to bite the bullet and do it. They need to get their cadence up. They can't have more delays. So, it, you know, it's a rough spot to be in, but I think they just got to do it and push ahead and hopefully they can get going on some of those national security contracts that are so, so valuable and really the reason for the entire existence of the company. It's going to be an extremely interesting story throughout the rest of the year for space fans to watch ULA and how Vulcan unfolds as well as how the acquisition unfolds. A lot of industry experts were expecting the acquisition to take place by, you know, mid this year. So really any time now. Um, a lot of them thought it may have already happened already, but obviously that hasn't been the case. Um, and if we see consolidation between Blue Origin and ULA, you know, there's not that many rocket companies out there, so there will be one less. Now, how long will Blue Origin continue to operate the Vulcan? Uh, that's anyone's guess. I'm sure they'll do it for the short term because it, it's tough scaling up rockets and having that manufacturing already in place for Vulcan as well as New Glenn and having those massive contracts. I'm sure they'll they'll launch more of them, but maybe eventually down the line, New Glenn being at least partially reusable, they'll try to start remanifesting those contracts that Vulcan has won onto New Glenn's and uh, make more money that way with the reusability factor, in which case eventually Vulcan will be phased out, which is very sad because a ton of tax dollars got funneled into the creation of this rocket. And obviously there'll be one less competitor in the space launch market, which already currently does not have nearly enough competitors. It's basically a complete monopoly by SpaceX and their Falcon 9 rocket, something nobody should want to have. Even if you're a SpaceX fan, you want other companies pushing them, pushing each other to lower prices, to be better, to be more efficient, to innovate more. Even if you're a SpaceX fan, which, you know, I think I sometimes am, uh, there's no denying that Starship looks amazing and Falcon 9 is probably the most successful rocket ever launched at this point. Yeah, so I do want them pushed to lower prices, pushed to continue to improve, and I do want to see a more vibrant, more wide space market, which is the opposite of what would happen if we have ULA purchased by Blue Origin, at least in my opinion. But, you know, maybe that does leave a little bit more room for Neutron. Another factor at play is I've been saying for a while, I think Neutron 
could be a good fit for Amazon's Kuiper satellites. And I was really hoping that could be one of Rocket Lab's, you know, anchor customers down the line. Uh, it just makes a ton of sense to me. And if you're talking about Vulcan having problems scaling up and not even being able to meet their obligations under the NSSL, then they probably won't have a ton of capacity available for Amazon, even though they have signed those contracts. Uh, yes, Amazon has signed deals with New Glenn, but Amazon is under a massive crunch to get these things in orbit before their time runs out. They, when with the FCC, they were given a deadline where they have have to have a certain number of their satellites in orbit. I think it's about half the constellation, so several thousand, and uh, they'll be under a time crunch. So, you know, hopefully, maybe once Neutron gets going, and if Vulcan does look like it's, uh, you know, having trouble with Cadence, maybe there's some launches to be picked up for Neutron there as well. We can always hope as Rocket Lab investors. And also maybe in the future, if the Space Force and the U.S. government is not as happy with the performance of ULA these days, especially given the amount of money they've given them to develop this rocket, uh, maybe there's more of a chance that Neutron gets more of those contracts too, and Space Force isn't so quick to give so many contracts to ULA like they have had in the past. So, uh, very interesting time in the space industry. It, Definitely will be good for SpaceX if there's more problems for Vulcan. Uh, I really hope they do get those things sorted out. It'll be fascinating to see when this acquisition goes through. There's still maybe the odd chance that a private equity deal it comes in and they continue to operate ULA as its own entity and it doesn't become part of Blue Origin. Personally, I would hope for that as a fan of space and someone who wants more competition in the space industry and the launch industry. But it's going to be fascinating to watch. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed some of my ramblings today but I really did want to get a video out because it's shocking obvious honestly if you could see the stats after three days of no video um, new subscribers views everything just falls off a cliff and it's really hard when you're trying to get something going to lose your momentum like that let me know what you think is going to happen with ULA down in the comments below I'd definitely be interested to hear do you think Blue Origin will buy them do you think Blue Origin intends to operate Vulcan you know for, on an ongoing basis for the foreseeable future uh, definitely interested to hear how you guys think this will all play out and I'll check your comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did find my ramblings somewhat interesting, I hope you'll consider subscribing. It's very helpful to continue to grow the channel. I will see you guys in the next video and I hope you have a great week. Bye for now.